guys, this is Meredith from the Witty Gritty Paper Company, and today I am going to show you how to paint your own planet with watercolors. So let's dive right in here with the supply list. For this tutorial, you will need one sheet of 140 pound cold press watercolor paper, high adhesive masking tape, masking fluid, one sort of junky cheap paintbrush, one flat brush, a round brush, mixing dishes, a pencil, an eraser, and a reference photo is also helpful if you have one. So the very first step here is to make a sketch of your planet. So I don't even know if you can see mine, it's so faint here. And the reason that I made it very, very light is because as soon as you paint over pencil lines with watercolor, you can't erase them at all. So, um, make sure your lines are very light before you move on to painting. Um, for the body of it, for the circular part of the planet, I just traced the rim of a bowl. And um, for the rings, I just, I did them freehand. But I, um, I also had a little bit of help because I pulled out a reference photo. So if you have a National Geographic lying around, then um, definitely use that to your advantage or, you know, Google Images is always good too. So next we move on to the masking fluid. So this is the masking fluid that I use. It's Windsor & Newton brand and it just says Art Masking Fluid. I don't know if you can see in my sketch, but if it were darker, you'd be able to see that um, there are two extra stripes on the body of the planet that aren't actually rings. And the reason those are there is because those are the shadows of the planet's rings cast back on the planet. So you don't have to do this, but I really think it adds a whole 3D effect to your painting. So um, that's definitely what I'm going to do. And um, since I want to paint them last, since they're the shadows, I'm going to cover them with the masking fluid. So this is masking fluid's purpose, is basically to preserve space. If you don't want to use it right away, you want to keep it till the end. Now you need to get yourself, if you're going to be using masking fluid, you need to get yourself a really, you know, cheap value pack of brushes. Like this one here, this is the one I'm going to use. It was like, it was really cheap. It was, I think, a seven pack of brushes for like $4. So get a pack of cheap junky brushes. And the reason is masking fluid ruins, it basically ruins all brushes, but it particularly ruins nice brushes. So definitely don't take, you know, your $20 brush and use it to apply your masking fluid. And the other thing to note about masking fluid is that it actually smells pretty awful. So you want to work somewhere that's well ventilated. Sorry, let's dive right in here. So you don't need much on your brush. Just enough cover the space. Now a lot of people will tell you not to shake up masking fluid, which, um, and I know why, it's because it gets all bubbly. So what you really want to do is kind of roll it around in your hands, um, kind of like how you would a nail polish bottle to avoid getting bubbles. So and sometimes you'll get little globs of it that stick together and that's okay. There's one stripe. The other thing you could do if you don't like masking fluid or don't want to invest in it is um, actually cut down pieces of masking tape to fit these little spaces. I mean, masking fluid's a lot easier just because these are little small, awkward spaces, but you know, there's a cheaper version to, cheaper way to do this. All depends on what you prefer. One other thing about masking fluid, one last thing, is that you absolutely do not want to keep going over them too many times once it starts to dry. Because, I mean, you can see a little bit of it happened here. It'll um, sort of solidify and you'll end up removing layers and it's messy. So you want to do, you want to work pretty quickly. All right, so those are done there. So um, one last thing, if you wash your junk brush out, um, right away, then you can get a few more uses out of it. So keep that in mind too. They are junky, but 
they're great for this purpose. Okay, so when your masking fluid is all dry, it should feel a little tacky on top. It'll, um, that's how you know it's dry. So now we can start with the actual painting. I have four colors mixed up here, but I'm gonna use five or six for the overall painting. What I'm using today are sap green, olive green, Windsor Violet, Deep Sap Green, and Hooker's Green. So your brush strokes here, they should be pretty random. And um, I'm keeping them pretty horizontal too, because that's how planet textures appear to me. I'll do lots of different shapes and just have fun with it. And you'll notice too that I'm avoiding my rings here. It's probably still hard to see because it's such a faint sketch, but keep that in mind too. The masking fluid is preserving the shadows, but you've still got to paint around your rings. And don't be afraid here to let some of the colors bleed into each other. Like working wet on wet. I'll let some of them bleed leave other edges to dry. You cannot create texture if you're timid. Looks kind of just muddy brown right now, but we'll get to the more vibrant greens in a minute. And you can make your planet any color. Um, I just went with this purple and green color scheme because that's what appealed to me. But um, feel free to do anything you want. I mean, you could paint an actual planet, like do Jupiter or Saturn, whatever you like. Don't forget to paint in between your masking fluid as well. All these little nooks and crannies, it's easy to forget about them. So once you're done and you've done all your crazy fun techniques, blended colors, squeezed water out of the brush, then it's very important that you let it dry completely. Okay, so now my planet texture is all dry and it is time to remove the masking fluid. So to do this, just wanna get your fingernail under one of the edges. And see if you can get a good grip on it here. All right, here we go. All right, so you want to pull slowly because otherwise it will snap on you. And I think there's actually a tool for removing masking fluid as well. But, um, you know, I don't have it. I don't even know what it's called because this always has worked for me. Um, one last thing about masking fluid. If you don't want to use brushes at all to apply it, or you know you can't get your shapes precise enough because of the junky bristles, then you can actually use a clay shaper with a silicone tip to apply it. So for um, other paintings, other purposes, that might be extremely useful. So the next step is filling in our rings. So I've mixed some more intense colors here, intense versions of my greens and purples. So I'm gonna start with the purple ring. Now you could choose to make your rings lighter, but I'm going to go darker. You wanna paint with a really steady hand here. Actually, if you don't, um, if you're not comfortable with using a round brush, 
You can use a detail brush or a flat brush. Actually, I might change to my flat brush here. Because if these aren't straight, it'll look kind of wonky. A lot of um, parts of nature are actually very symmetrical. So definitely want to take your time with this part. If it's not perfect, that's okay too, but the straighter they are, I think the better it looks. Now, if you don't have liquid watercolors, which is actually what I'm using here to get this really intense color, you don't have that, that's okay. I mean, just mix the darkest color you can get. All right, so the last thing to paint here is the shadows. I'm going to use a tiny little square tipped brush. I'm going to paint it in carbon black. Now it's up to you how intense you wanna make these. I like them pretty dark. Because I figure it's the vacuum of space. Shadows are probably pretty darn intense. It's also important to be mindful of how thick you make these because if the shadow is thicker than the ring, the overall image could look a little distorted. So just paint nice and slowly and keep looking back at it. And again, wait for it to dry completely. When it's all completely dry, remove your masking tape slowly, pulling at a sharp 90 degree angle. Don't forget to sign your masterpiece as well. If you like what you've seen so far, please subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. And if you'd like to see any more of my work, please check out any of the links at the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.